Viva La Bam was an American reality television series that starred Bam Margera and his host of Friends and Family. Now, after its premiere in October of 2003, well, it was immediately positioned by MTV as the spiritual successor to Jackass that they very much needed. I just know that they have some serious hell coming their way. <laughs> Dude, they're dead. Unlike with Jackass, well, the episodes of Viva La Bam, they tended to have a more specific theme, a mission, or a challenge that would be explored throughout the length of each episode. Now, the show, it wasn't quite the cultural phenomenon that Jackass proved to be, but it had a dedicated fan base all around the world, and it was popular enough to last five seasons, which, you know, is three seasons longer than Jackass. But after the show went off the air in August of 2005, well, the fans of this series were left without their daily fix of stars like Ryan Dunn, not to mention Bam and his father Phil, his mother April, and his unforgettable uncle, Don Vito. So now that it's been almost 15 years since we last checked in with a lot of these individuals, well, how about we find out what exactly they've all been up to? And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it ain't pretty. My name, of course, is Michael McCrudden. We recently dropped a dark side of fame on BAM that you guys seem to really enjoy. You can check out that video after this one, but for now, let's get into it. Let's kick things off with the Margera family and take a look at BAM's dad, Phil. Now, researching this video, we actually found an old throwback pic of Phil from his wife's Instagram page, and the caption it reads, Phil at 13, before everyone fed him. Now, Phil had been involved in his son's pranks since the early days of CKY, and he made some fan-favorite appearances in Jackass over the years as well. Now, prior to his career in television, Will Phil, he actually worked as a baker. That's before he found himself in bit parts leading up to his star-turning role in Viva La Bam, which was in the mid-2000s. On TV, Phil, he often came across as a kind, gentle, and easygoing guy, even when his son was absolutely destroying his life. After Viva La Bam came to an end, Bill Phil, he would go on to appear in the VH1 reality show Celebrity Fit. Now joining this series so that he could lose some weight, helping to expend his lifespan, also so he could spend more time with his grandchildren. Now at the offset of the series, well, Phil, he weighed in at a whopping 353 pounds. But by the time it was over, well, Phil, he lost the most weight out of everyone else on the show, 41 pounds in total, which brought him down to a more manageable 312 pounds. Which to be honest, I'm getting close to myself. I'm a big guy. All in all, not a bad glow up for a man that had put up with so much from his son over all these years. These days, Phil, he's enjoying his days as a grandfather and he regularly posts a few pics to Instagram. Now he doesn't have a huge following, but hey, the guys still keep him with it. Next up is Bam's mom and Phil's wife, April. Uh, you are by far the most awesome mom I've ever seen in my life. I just wonder how you deal with all the insanity and keep such a cool head. Um, now, April popped up from time to time on CKY and Jackass as well, but much like her husband, she became a regular on Viva La Bam, where her son would take to tormenting her in moments like this. What the hell is going on in here? <laughs> Fire team. Are you kidding me? Yes. Now, after the series came to an end, well, April, she would write her very own cookbook that was published in 2006, and it was titled April Cooks. There's an alligator in my kitchen. Now, I know you're probably thinking, what the hell kind of title is that? Well, who can forget this? Is this thing real? This alligator! Those parents literally lived and slept in fear. I mean, you never know what was going to happen next. A few years later, well, April, she would open up a store in Thorn, Pennsylvania, alongside her mother and her daughter-in-law that sells refurbished furniture as well as homemade accessories. It's called the Rose Hip Barn. Since then, she's also been a crucial member of her son's support system in his battle to get sober. But well, we'll circle back to that in just a minute. Other popular members of the series include Bam's friends, Brandon DiCamillo, Brandon DiCamillo, Rake Yawn, and Rab himself. Now, he took to his own serious addiction of painkillers and had multiple surgeries over the years. Ray Kwan, who joined BAM from back in the CKY days, and as you know, is the guy who hates mustard. Well, his bio on Twitter, it reads, Jungle Man, Scientist, CKY, Viva La Bam, Jackass, Happy Husband, Computer Nerd. Then we actually found his LinkedIn page where he listed that his specialties are in small molecule and biofarm process research and scale up. 
He's also technical transfer to pilot plant commercial manufacturing. And uh, while well, he's working at Galaxo Smith Klein. So I think he's doing all right. Now, Brandon, another founding member of the CKY crew. He's probably one of the most low key and often off the radar members of the Jackass crew. Now, he's believed to have a wife and kids living in Pennsylvania. He's popped up here and there on a podcast over the years. And on Twitter, well, he states that he still enjoys classic toys, which makes this classic CKY clip, well, it makes a whole lot more sense now. Now, I'd argue that Skeletor versus Beastman, it's CKY at its best. Now, moving on to the final Margera family member. Well, that isn't Bam himself. Let's take a look at Uncle Vincent Margera. I'm to anyway, change the rules. Vincent popped up from time to time in CKY and Jackass, but he would become the breakout star of Evil La Bam, where he was commonly referred to as Don Vito. That's thanks to his unintelligible speech that made him sound like the Godfather's Don Vito Corleone. Now, after the series came to an end, well, Vito, he was primed and ready to make it big in a co-starring role in Jackass number two, but then some extremely troubling legal issues they would crop up and take him out of the film altogether. In 2016, he was arrested at the Colorado Mills Mall on suspicion of inappropriately touching Baba Boy. Excuse me, I, I, ugh, this stuff just grosses me out. Now, he was soon after released after posting $50,000 in bail and during his preliminary hearing, well, he was represented by Pamela McKay. That's the same lawyer who once defended Kobe Bryant back in 2003. Now, Vincent pleaded not guilty in his arraignment in March of 2007 and his trial, it then started in October. Now, during the case, his lawyer argued that Vincent had simply been playing his goofy, outrageous and vulgar character for the young teens. The jury deliberated for a day and then returned the verdict of guilty on two accounts of SNA on a minor and acquitted him of one count. Gross. Now in December of 2007, Will Vincent, he was sentenced to 10 years of probation to be served in Pennsylvania. Now he was further ordered to never portray his character ever again in any type of setting. That's while he was serving his sentence. He was also forced to register as an S offender in the state of Colorado and in Pennsylvania. Now years later, before his sentence would come to an end, Will Vincent, he collapsed in his Westchester home and he was rushed to the hospital. Now, as someone who had suffered from obesity most of his life, not to mention sucking back on grandfather's old cough medicine, well, he wasn't able to overcome his illness and he died from a massive organ failure after slipping into a coma on November 15, 2015. From one tragic ending to another, let's take a look at the fate of Eva LaBam cast member and Bam's best friend, Ryan Dunn. Don't you want to do it a little, Dunn? No. You sure? Yeah. There was a huge participant in both CKY and Jackass. Well, it was never a question of whether or not Ryan would be a part of Bam's new series. Simply put, these two, they were as close as brothers. I met Ryan when I was 12 years old. He came from Cleveland, Ohio. We just kind of hit it off right away. Which makes what happened to Ryan after the series went off the air, well, all the more tragic. Now in 2010, Will Ryan, he was on the precipice of becoming his biggest star as his best friend. Now Jackass 3D, it was on its way, and he had starred in a number of small independent films like one called Living Will, in which he played a ghost that haunted his still living best friend. Sadly, it would only be weeks after that trailer dropped that life would begin to reflect art. Now after Ryan and a good friend of his named Zachary Hartwell spent the night drinking at a pub in Westchester, Pennsylvania, well Ryan, he made the extremely poor decision to drive them both home. While driving down a stretch of rural highway, while Ryan's Porsche, it jumped a guardrail, flew into a wooded ravine, it struck a tree, and it burst into flames. Now, Ryan and Zachary, they died from the impact of the crash and the resulting fire. In the 13 years prior to the accident, while Ryan had amassed at least 23 driving citations, including 10 for speeding and careless driving. Now, he was also arrested in 2005 for a DUI. Now his charges, they were eventually dropped after he completed a probationary program, but his license was suspended for more than a year. Now, according to a future press release put out by the West Goshen Police Department, well, the country coroner would discover that Ryan, he had a blood alcohol concentration of 0.196. That's more than twice the legal limit in Pennsylvania. But beyond that, no other drugs were detected in his system. Now, Bam had been in Arizona at the time of the accident and received what he described as the worst phone call he's ever gotten in his life. Basically, you know, they told him what happened and, uh, he just, you know, it's, it's kind of the straw that broke the back for Bam. Now, strangely enough, he actually had a premonition of the accident only moments prior. At 1230, I just started punching out the windows of the rental van and ripping out the speakers. And I don't even know why I wasn't mad at anything or anybody. And 
and if it's 12.30 there, that means that it was exactly when he crashed. <laughs> Needless to say, after having to live through the follow to this event, well, bam, he was left devastated and his life, it changed for the worse. Now he took to drinking more and more and no longer just for fun. He simply wanted to forget about the immense pain that he was dealing with. In 2015, he was entering rehab, but he would leave without ever finishing the program. Now instead, he decided to appear on Family Therapy with Dr. Jen on VH1, where he opened up alongside his mother who was there to provide her support. I don't know. Not like I was going to do it or anything, but I was like, just send me in that pool and make sure I don't come back up. For a little bit, well, things were better. Bam cleaned up and he took a family trip to Europe to get his head on straight. Now he was clean for months, but then he began to drink once more while still in Europe. By 2018, with his first child on the way, well, Bam, he checked into rehab for a third time looking to get clean. This time though, well, it was state mandated as Bam, he had been arrested for a DUI in LA and he was required to actually complete the program for the very first time. Now in the end, well, it wouldn't really matter all that much because by 2019, well, he was returning to rehab for a fourth time. And this time after relapsing due to a scary holdup that took place while he was visiting Colombia. Now you don't think that he was sober for seven Well, months. I mean, I don't know. And I don't want him to, to feel like I'm attacking him or calling him out. I just think that there were, signs that uh that if he hadn't already drank it was evident that he was going to and but regardless of the reasons well it was never enough to make him stay because he would once again check out early now, soon after that came yet another state mandated week in a mental health facility after he was kicked off of an airplane in atlanta why well because he was too drunk Desperate for help, well, bam, he turned to Dr. Phil, who uh, had him as a guest on his show and offered him the best advice he could. Much like every other time in his life, will this help for a while until it didn't. Now these days, bam, he's deep in the throes of a new feud with his fellow jackass cast members after he broke his contractual stipulations that would have seen him become a part of the upcoming Jackass 4. Upset and hurt by being left out, well, bam, he posted a ton of videos to his social media accounts expressing thoughts like this. No matter where I was at, I had to stop whatever I was doing and go to an urgent care to go piss. Then I had to wake up every day with a handful of antidepressant pills that I would have to show Paramount Pictures that I took them and swallowed them every single day. Now it's been reported that his friends are once more trying to help him to get sober, but whether or not something like that will ever truly happen for Bam, I guess only time will tell. The good thing is now is is uh, he's got like he's under a conservatorship, you know, and it's not a conservatorship; it's a guardianship. Oh, really? And the conservatorship it's has Britney Spears. has financial implications. With the conservatorship, they're they're in charge of all of your your money and everything. A guardianship, they they kind of leave your money out of it. As for the rest of the story, well, I think I'm just gonna wrap this one up here. But uh, you can check out more about Bam and the dark side of fame in the other video we drop. My name is Michael McCrudden. This one was uh, was a was a big one, a long one to sit through. So thank you all who continue to support this channel. I'll see you guys in another video.